Uh, my name is Julius Tuomisto. Uh, this is Janne Karhu. Uh, we're also presenting with Jessica Kokonen. So it's three people. Um, this talk is about uh, markerless motion capture in Blender. Uh, from our background, uh, we're going to give up a little bit of a background uh, and then go into the state of the art, just talk a little bit about all of this. Uh, we're going to move into uh, our software, uh, it's called Enimate, and the new release of, of that software, which we did this August. Uh, and then uh, the, kind of the, the, the fun part is actually the demos. We're, we have uh, two demos with us for today, and then uh, we're actually lucky enough to have a workshop tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, <laughs> lucky enough, uh, at 10 o'clock. Um, so, so, so for those of you who are interested in, in 3D cameras, um, and kind of what you could do with, with especially with Intel RealSense cameras, then you, you could take part in that workshop. Gonna give a little bit of a talk about that later. Uh, like I said, we're three people at the moment. So also a tiny, tiny little company from Helsinki, Finland. I'm Julius uh, Janne, and yes, is gonna join, join on the stage a little bit later. Um, we are uh, specifically a, a company that develops um, applications that make use of computer vision and, and 3D cameras. Uh, we've been doing this for the past four, four or five years. Uh, and our revenue comes from, uh, just for those uh, interested in kind of the, um, how to create business out of 3D software like Blender, uh, then our revenue comes, comes from licensing software and, and doing custom development uh, stuff for clients. Um, just to give a brief background of, of for those, um, I mean, most of the people in the room are, are probably well aware of, of what is motion capture and performance capture. But just to give a kind of a background, then, then today's performance performance capture is 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 aiming to kind of get get the instead of getting a generic output out of motion capture and kind of um, replacing animation in the in the workflow for any film or or production, uh, then. And performance capture is, 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 is generally really trying to get um, to the core of the, the actor himself. Oh, and and uh, most of, but, uh, but as, as you might, as those people who, who are familiar with these systems, uh, they know that these systems are relatively expensive and time consuming to set up. Uh, Markerless systems are, are kind of a more recent development. Uh, I guess most of you, um, have have kind of if if you think of the image of what is motion capture, most of uh, most people will will immediately think of of kind of people in funny suits uh, with with tiny tiny little uh, markers and and then moving around in a studio environment. Uh, markerless systems are are of course a little bit different. They they um, they uh, kind of use computer vision to um, to go for, for a more um, easy, easy, faster take up time. Uh, unfortunately, this, this in, in kind of traditional systems, uh, this I, I will kind of give a clue about uh, some new systems that don't have these problems, but traditionally they are less accurate uh, than marker-based solutions. Uh, so this means equals to more, more cleaning essentially. So, so if you've ever worked with motion capture, um, uh, motion capture, uh, output then then it, it usually does require cleaning so it's it's ne definitely no um, no substitute for for uh, animations always uh, so examples of markerless capture systems apart from our our own uh, are, are is a Russian software called iPySoft and then a German system system called Capture. Um, and to be honest, uh, I, I, from what I've seen from the capture, I have to say that their, their system is probably the most um, developed uh, markerless motion capture system in the market today. Uh, then going into our own software, uh, Enimate, which has been around for, um, I guess now, for three and a half years. Um, we released the beta, I think, January 2012. Um, and... Um, Animate is essentially, um, the, the name comes from natural interaction mate or animate. Um, we kind of, in Finnish, we, we, we always say animate, but actually uh, we, I later figured out that when we named the software, it's, it's not, not necessarily that in English. Um, but Animate uh, as a software is, is not necessarily, doesn't aim to compete with these professional solutions that are in the market, but, they, but the software tries to provide a kind of an entry level point for people to um, get into get in touch with motion capture and, and, and to 
use, use it in, in easy workflows. Uh, what the NMID does is essentially, uh, instead of relying on RGP input, uh, we, we've hooked up, uh, since the beginning, we've focused, the earliest version was, was essentially a, a Kinect version, so you could have a, use a Kinect for Xbox 360. Uh, now the new version, what we've done is, is essentially we've introduced a number of different new sensors into the, into the software, which then have different qualities. Uh, we, we're going to do a demo with the Kinect for Windows, for example. The Kinect for Windows has, has some fantastic qualities, which Kinect for Xbox sensor didn't. But, but then, to be honest, uh, uh, no, I, we, we find out, found out that, that, that uh, a lot of these sensors, they have strong points and then they have weak points. So unfortunately, uh, you always tend to, when you're doing client work, for example, you tend to kind of um, uh, Learn the hard way that, that you you cannot really do everything with these sensors. Uh, a lot of these, most of the sensors that we work with, or actually all of them, all of the the ones that are supported by the software are also infrared sensors. So, so obviously, um, for those people who have who have uh, any uh, background in infrared or, or using infrared ca cameras, they are they can be uh, difficult to to use. Uh, some of the different uh, the the one of the the main main nice points about this uh, about our tool is is that it's apart from being super easy to set up uh, is that we do support a number of these different sensors. Uh, so you can kind of mix your uh, if you want to use the leap with the Kinect or if you want to use the real sense with with the Kinect for Xbox, uh, you you could essentially do that. Uh, the use cases are, are kind of, uh, instead of focusing solely on, on uh, motion capture in itself, uh, we animate, um, and to be honest, I mean, markerless solutions themselves, um, they, they are nice in the sense that um, they offer kind of uh, more use cases than natural, like normal or back, uh, let's say traditional motion capture, whereas you're using markers and so forth. I mean, obviously, you're not going to ask somebody who comes to a shopping mall to wear a, a kind of a funny frog suit with, with markers and then move around uh, uh, to, to play a game. Uh, it's, so, so one of the nice things about markerless solutions is exactly that, that you can employ them uh, in, in, in environments which wouldn't naturally, uh, or you wouldn't um, use a normal uh, traditional motion capture system. Um, we have a range of plugins for NIMATE. Um, there's there's um, one for Blender, obviously. Uh, that's why we're here. Uh, our background, of course, is in, in a lot in Blender. Um, but we have some plug plugins for, for others, other um, software as well. But today, um, I mean, our for the past, like, like I said, um, for the past couple of years we've been working on, or let's say one and a half years, we really worked on a lot on the, the new version of NIMATE. And in order to... The, the, new, the cool thing about this new version is that uh, we are able to really support a range of these sensors. So today um, we were going, going, to, going to kind of um, announce that we are, we've now put out uh, support for Intel RealSense. And personally I feel that RealSense is kind of, um, it's a boon for us in, in, in that uh, it's the first uh, system that's actually been integrated really into, into uh, a range of laptops and, and devices. So, so for us, uh, obviously, it, it's, uh, it's an interesting market, but it also, uh, I think that it also kind of verifies and, and legitimizes the, the, the kind of the 3D camera uh, as an input device uh, because of, of the fact that you can actually buy a laptop from, from the shop uh, with, with, this, with these cameras. Um, but today we uh, basically uh, we're making uh, Enamet available for anybody uh, with a real source camera. So so now you can basically, because of this work, you can you can run um, your real sense and, and you can use Blender with it. Uh, and in order to kind of demonstrate uh, what what you can do with that, we're going to do do first a Kinect for Windows demo. So this is this is actually a. Um, uh, a client work that we did for uh, a company called Celia Line, uh, a big uh, boating company uh, that works out of Helsinki and Stockholm. Uh, and basically wh what this demo demonstrates is, is an actual business use case for, uh, for these sensors. Um, whereas we've hooked up, uh, there's a, a kind of a game, it is, this, the, this demonstration has been done in, in the Blender game engine. 
uh, and we were running it in, in kiosks um, around, around um, Finland and also now uh, on, the, on the ships themselves. Um, and essentially the, the nice thing about this is that we are actually also, this, this one, we're using uh, smile detection. So, so it, it's not only a kind of a connected game, but we're also taking input from the face, reading the, the, the facial, doing some facial, uh, facial uh, expression recognition and then, then applying it on, a, on an actual client case. So for the, the, if, if you want to, oh, will I do it? So Janne is going to take over for a minute. Yeah. Okay, so here we have uh, uh, Animate already running, and it's now connected to the Kinect for Windows sensor here. And then this, uh, this game, is, uh, it's all done in Blender. There are quite a lot of stuff going on. But if I now then actually show the, what it looks like when it's uh, running, let's see. Okay, now Ulysses is detected by the sensor. Actually, if you can first move a bit, a bit away so that it isn't tracking you. So basically, this is how it, it's going on a portrait display. So that's why the aspect ratio is like that. And then once it detects that there's somebody to play, it first gives some instructions. And you can directly see that Julius uh, can move the move the character and then you can play a half a minute of game to see how many, how many times you hit the ball over the line. But uh, one of the nice things is that uh, because we have uh, also smile detection or emotion detection, although I don't know if it could be lighting, there are too many shadows. Yeah. I'm doing my best to smile. Harry is not smiling. Yeah, what should be happening is uh, that the seal would also smile when you smile. So it gives that extra bit of nice interactivity. So essentially, um, this is a, a piece of work that we did as a consultation work for, uh, for a client, and it's just a, a kind of an example use case of, of Markle's motion capture for, for a client. Uh, that you could do, uh, I mean, and, and the nice uh, use case, of course, the, the fun part about it is, is that this Blender game engine that is running a, a kind of um, in, a, in an actual environment. So this is, uh, the, you can play this game on, on, on these boats from uh, Helsinki to Stockholm and back, uh, actually today. But unfortunately, the, the smart detection is not working, so. Demo, demo, demo effect. Um, then, uh, I mean, just to keep uh, keep in schedule, let's see how how short we can keep this talk. <laughs> but we have another one. This one is uh, more funny. Uh, I can't see. I can't see Don Rosendahl in the in the house. But uh, so yes, I can do. Can you do something about that? So yeah, um, testing. So what we are now going to do, be doing is. Uh, slight bit of animation using my own face. It would be better if Tom was around. Is Tom Rosendahl here? Is Tom Rosendahl in the house? No, no, unfortunately, well, unfortunately no. no. No, so let's, let's call Tom. So this demonstration is, is kind of, it gives a two, um, two way look to, into, um, into 3D cameras. I mean, you get um, two use cases in one, in this one. No, Tom? No? Okay, well, so we have this model here. It seems to be a human being. And if we enable the texture, we can see it is done. If anybody remembers from, from last year, uh, we had part scanning people, so. So first of all, I'm going to enable a, the plugin we are using with Enamit. Uh, this is actually the new plugin. It's not available yet. We can put it online soon. Uh, but the thing it does is that it creates this new menu here, and I can start receiving data from Enamit. And if I go here and first do a tiny bit of calibration, Okay, so right now Enamate is uh, detecting my face. I can, I can turn my face, face there's this 
uh, display with my facial gestures on it. And if I now go in Blender, <laughs> so the system we are using here is quite simple. It's simply we are using these landmark points on our face and using uh, we turn them into facial action units, which are then received in Blender, and we are controlling some very simple uh, shape keys. <laughs> He's a gymnast also, Tony. <laughs> Very flexible. Anyway, we are going to be demonstrating this more tomorrow in the workshop, so if you're interested, yeah. you, can, you can try it there. So if you can put on the last slide. So we're going to try to keep, keep this one on time, so we're going to run just short of 20 minutes. Uh, basically, you can download NIMED today for, uh, um, to get started with Intel RealSense. Uh, or any of your existing sensors. We support the Leap Motion, uh, Kinect for Windows, Kinect for Xbox, and all of the OpenNI devices. Uh, if you're here, uh, if you're taking part in, in the actual event, which is actually awesome, uh, it's always awesome. This is, I think it's my seventh, seventh time here. Um, then definitely take part in tomorrow's workshop. If, if you can make it, it's at 10 o'clock. It's a terrible time. I, I, but if you can make it take part and uh, unleash your 3D camera, the nice thing uh, in the workshop, so we'll be going through these actual use cases. We'll make sure that Harry will smile tomorrow. Uh, we'll make sure that, uh, we'll be doing these demonstrations, giving a, a kind of a more detailed background into them. Uh, we also have Jonas Kuhlberg for, from Intel, Intel telling us a little bit about, uh, so, so the workshop is a cooperation with, between us and, and Intel. Uh, and Yunus will be telling a little bit about RealSense cameras at the event, um, but we'll be also giving out uh, some uh, SDKs so you can get started. You, you could basically walk out with um, with ton with a speaking ton tomorrow if you if you want. Or or uh, and we'll also be doing some giving some uh, kind of um, examples of of things that we haven't unleashed uh, in terms of real sense and, and things that you could do uh, with the, the, if you're a developer um, for the future. For example, um, I mean, scan 3D, we'll, we'll be talking about 3D scanning. If you, somebody wants to get scanned tomorrow, uh, we can do that and then we can hook you up, uh, we can animate you <laughs> if you want to talk with Ton in the digital version um, and so forth. Uh, but we'll be giving a kind of a more de in detail uh, talk about all of this stuff that we, we presented today. Uh, hopefully you'll make it. Uh, and if not, uh, thank you for your time. If, if, if there's, a, there's a little bit of time, so if anybody has any questions, uh, please fle feel free. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I could, I could maybe give Janne, Janne the, the floor here. Yeah, that was uh, pretty much the the main reason why we started working on on Animate version two, is that the old old Animate didn't really allow you to have multiple sensors running at the same time, but now if 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 your computer is powerful enough, you can basically run however many sensors you want. <coughs> Uh, but essentially, I mean, if your question is if whether we do fusion uh, in terms of the, the motion capture, unfortunately not. So, so we are aiming to do go for the go for that uh, in somewhere in the future. But at the moment, it's a kind of a dumb, dummy system where where, the, where all the input is just coming in, and then you need to filter it out. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, another question: um, Can you use record two person at the same time? Meaning that you have two person interacting, like in a martial arts scenario or something? Yeah, I mean, it uh, depends on the sensor. It, it really depends on, for example, the Kinect for Windows. You could do this uh, also with the, all the Xboxes. Uh, you could do this, definitely. Uh, but it um, depends on the use case. So because we rely on, on, on the input that's coming out of, out of the SDKs, uh, the software, the, the tracking is as good as the SDK is, essentially. All right, thanks. Any more questions? OK. Okay, so, so you can catch us also, uh, just come talk if, if you're shy today and, and uh, we'll be here. Thanks.